My first memories of the stars is when I was, I must have been about three or four years old and my grandfather used to take me outside in the dark, very dark nights at the time and he used to show me all these beautiful patches of light and um, I remember Venus, that's my first memory. I'm Haritina Mogoshanu and I'm Education Coordinator for Kiwi Space Foundation. I always loved the stars for some reason. I've always loved to go out and, and look at them for, for no reason. And one day, I was about six years old, my mum bought me this huge dictionary for learning properly Romanian language. She was very happy, you know, she gave it to me and I've opened it and one picture on one page there was the life and the death of a star and how it was formed and that was for me the thing that got me into astronomy so badly it was um, I, i'll never forget i'll never forget it it was a star that was born and then it was like our sun and then it showed there how it was transformed into a red giant and from a red giant into a white dwarf neutronic star and then um, eventually big stars they go black holes and it was me, six years old, and I'll carry that with me forever and ever. That was it. That was it. I was hooked for life. Another thing that triggered me being a public person in the area of astronomy was the fact that in the high school, not in the high school, in the school, I had five minutes of astronomy. That was all. Not even five minutes. The, the geography teacher, because that was um, who, the person who was telling us, he wasn't really into planets and, and astronomy and stuff. So all he did in that lesson, that I, was, I waited for like about a year. I was like so excited to have the astronomy lesson at school. I couldn't wait. And he only talked about uh, the planets. The planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, wherever, Mars, Jupiter, um, you know, what have you. And that was all. And it was the biggest disappointment of my student life ever. I was so sad. I almost cried. I couldn't believe it. And I got very sad and, and I, I tried to find out more things. So when I was about 14 years old, we had to choose what high school we needed to go. And I said to my mom that I wanted to be an astronomer. And so we went to try and find a astronomy or astronomy related high school. And there was none in Romania at the time and the only remote thing that I could have done was something related to physics and mathematics but things were going towards biology so people started to study biology very much and there was a future in biology so she asked me whether I'd like to consider going to do a career in biology and on the way sometimes maybe I could have switched back to to being an astronomer so I said um, yes and then I went to university to become a horticultural engineer so I know everything about how to make farms and um, how to plant trees and how to prune them, how to drive the tractors, how to fix engines for these tractors, make irrigation systems and uh, everything you would need if you would go to terraform a planet. And I struggled my whole life because I wanted to be an astronomer and I didn't know how to become one. So the, the Mars Desert Research Station was, other than having my daughter, this was the second best that happened to me. And it was for very many reasons. And the reason that um, vibrated with me the most was that I finally made peace between me, the horticultural engineer and the astronomer. And it made peace through, through going to this place, to the Mars Desert Research Station, which is a place on Earth where we simulate life on Mars. And um, we went to this place in the middle of nowhere. It's in the middle of the desert. And this desert is huge. And all of a sudden you go into the reservation in Utah and you, you know you know all those pictures from Utah with all those lunar landscape or Martian landscape because the, the, the sand, the soil there is red and it's just amazing. You, you go there and it's another world. It is another world. It's nothing that I have seen before in my life. Everything on this earth 
it just sends you back to the stars it sends you back and I didn't know for so much time I had no idea how and why we're so fascinated with the stars what is it that it just drives us to go there you know I go outside from from work and the first thing I do is this and I didn't realize until I was talking to a friend of mine recently and she was telling me that oh me and my son every time we go outside we look at the stars and I thought hey hold on I, I do the same thing I'm checking the stars I want to see where where they are what's happening to them I, I was I remember before I came here to New Zealand I was about 30 years old and I was going there my mom was was ringing I was like where are you and I'm, like, I'm at the observatory mama you know I was 30 years old you know that's a lot of years old and she's like oh make sure you don't stay too late and I'm like I'm watching the stars <laughs> It's like my daughter doesn't go anywhere. She only goes to look to, to look at the stars. This is very worrying. When I came here, I so I started working for Carter Observatory. I went there to uh, um, to get a. I applied for an office job because that was the opening, and they said, "Ah, oh, no, oh, we don't really want to take you for a for a office job, but we can offer you a, a planetarium presenter job." So I'm like, "Yes," because actually this is what I wanted. But they didn't have openings for that. But they said, "Oh no, you're you're too awesome because you know the Greek mythology." My job at Carter is a storyteller. I'm telling stories about the stars, and um, I'm working as a planetarian and a telescope operator. Carter Observatory is important because it's a magical place. It's a place where you learn. Um, it's a place where you come to find out things about the universe and you go back home inspired. I had so many times friends of mine that were uh, I dragged here to, to have a look at Carter and, uh, and after they saw the place and they had a look around, they were telling me, how can I be upset or how can I deal with my everyday things in life when I'm thinking that I'm just a speck of grain of dust in, in the whole um, universe and everything else just goes into, um, um, it just puts things into such a perspective that your problems from every day um, are changing and, and they don't matter anymore. I used to tell people, I asked them how old they are, especially kids, and they tell me, oh, I'm eight years old, I'm nine years old, and, and I'm, I'm going back to them and I tell, I tell them, I said, no, you're 4.5 billion years old. And they're like, no way, there is no way. And, and I say, yes, way, you are that old. All your um, chemical elements that your body is made of and, and the books around here and the walls and the chairs and everything else was made 4.5 uh, billion years ago in the heart of a star, of course, other than the oxygen, the, sorry, the hydrogen and the helium. Um, so they, they, they can't believe it. They're absolutely amazed with this. And so many people came here to Carter and they left transformed. They did. They did. Carter is my favorite place on earth. Um, it's a place that I, it's, it's a place that I met in 2005 and instantly fell in love with and it's got everything. It's got history, it's got um, science in it. It's a place that waits, awaits to be discovered. By, by people and um, all, I, all I can say about Carter is come here and have a look and, and discover what's, what's inside. Astronomy is a huge subject. It doesn't take just one person or one generation to, to accomplish the research. It is not something that you can um, um, relate to, to just one, one person or, or um, or a very short period of time. Astronomy is huge, it's big, and and people, I hope people will um, continue doing astronomy in the future. And, and my, granddad, um, my granddad took me out when I was a child, and I absolutely loved him. He He's my hero, he's my childhood hero, and I really hope my daughter will like the stars. I'm telling her stories, um, bedtime stories related to the stars, and she, um, she knows about floating in space. We watch a lot of movies. Just because I like it, I, I buy her toys with stars. But at the end of the day, um, she was declaring to me the other week that she wants to be a ballerina. She's about four years old, so she still has time. She said, actually, she said she wants to be a ballerina first and then an astronaut. And uh, at the end of the day, I would like her to be what she loves. So that's the most important thing. And um, it doesn't matter what you do, as long as you do it with passion, as long as this ignites your inner fire, that's the most important thing in life. But yeah, no, my daughter, I love her to do anything she likes.
but astronomy would be nice if you would become or a physicist or something you know related to the stars. My role in the story of the universe, I'm a storyteller. That's my role. I'm telling stories about the stars to people and I hope they will listen to some and beyond that they will go and make their own discoveries. That's my role.